Let's go. Hey guys, fishing stuff. Today we're talking about how to do YouTube. So stick around. <laughs> he don't get no better than that. He's, He's like a little puppet. We've ever had there, Lyle. It don't get no better. <laughs> Welcome awful. everybody to Catfish Weekly, along with Chad and Dieter Melhorn and Keith and Bob. We got a great show lined up for everybody tonight. If you want to know or find out anything about <clears throat> YouTube, what it takes to be successful, if you have questions, this is where you need to be. We're going to get to that in one minute. I've got an announcement for some tournament results, and then we're going to get started right away. And the results are for the Indiana Catfish Association. And first place over the weekend went to James Holcomb and my buddy Chuck Breedlove. They had 91.82 pounds, won $1,100. Second place went to Terry Holden and Mary Jane Woods, 89.77 pounds. They won $620. Third place was Richard Keish. Keisha with 65.4 pounds, $320. Fourth place, Mike Goodwin and Mark Fanning, 46.75. And Big Fish, or that was Big Fish. I'm not sure they didn't clarify. $340. And fifth place was Randalls and Roydens with 37.37 pounds. Great job, fellas. And uh, I want to let everybody know that uh, Mark, with Catfish and Crappie, was planning on doing a show live tonight, fishing, after we're done. But he's got a storm moving through, and he won't be able to get out there. We don't want him out there in the storm. If they get a bunch of lightning and stuff, want him to be safe, so uh, he won't be on after the show. So there we are. Welcome, boys. We are so glad to see you guys. Um, I can't believe Dieter was in St. Louis and didn't call me and tell me. I can't. I, I, I text you and let you know I was there. I know. You know, I know. He sent several of his messages telling us <laughs> not to let you know. Yeah. yeah. That, so, see, somebody found out I was in St. Louis and they came and slashed 19 car tires <laughs> in our parking lot thinking I was one of them, but they missed. So I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a great race. I enjoyed it quite a bit. So, um, um, although. You know, you, I thought you could hook me up some free tickets. <laughs> that one, a lot of races I can get you into. That one was sold out, including all the reserve stuff. Yeah, it was, can... it's, it's the biggest crowd. Well, we've had a couple of good races this year with sellouts, but that one was packed. Yeah, back in the day when I used to go to them, the only one I never could get tickets to was Bristol. And now that they're doing it on dirt, I really want to go. <laughs> well, sadly, sadly, nobody, no, nowhere near as many people go now. Uh, yeah, I know. It's too bad. It. There's, there's like, you can get tickets. You didn't used to get them. You just, you know, I was on waiting list every year and I finally just give up on it. Dieter's mm -hmm. kind of locked yep. up. Yep. Oh, it it is what it is. Keith, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm I'm doing great, man. It's great to see you guys in here tonight, and and uh, I know that you and I have talked about this, and and uh, we're going to talk about what it takes to be successful in YouTube and stuff. And I'm looking forward to your opinions on that, and what you think it takes to make people successful. Uh, and let's face it, you've done very well, so uh, you ought to have an idea what's going on. <laughs> I'm being <in> back. <laughs> <laughs> And Bob, we had you a while back on on Catfish yep. Weekly, and and I was so impressed with with what you had to say about um, the editing and all the stuff that you talked about. I thought you'd be a great asset to this show. So welcome okay. in here with us. I and, appreciate uh, the invite, Lyle. I have got a bunch of questions, uh, but I'm going to give Chadwick a chance to say something before I get to those. What do I get to say finally? Well, I don't know. I thought maybe. <laughs> Oh, maybe, hey, everybody. Um, I didn't even know Lyle knew I was here tonight. He's got the all-star cast here with him. And, uh, and then Where is that? Out. I got one of these. We can stop that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't treat you like that. You I, know, have. I am very much looking forward to tonight's show. A lot of a lot of knowledge, but I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be some maybe some differences in views on some different things. So that's what I want to hear is your all's different takes on some things. So 
I like that I'm now above Lyle, though, by the way. <laughs> Lyle. Sir. You want to say hi to anybody? I think we better say hi to whoever's in chat. Which I think we ought to. Me like there's a there's lot of in there. Up in there. Yeah. All right. I will go through this as fast as I can, but try not to miss yeah. anybody. We got Jason Lamb, Avid Fisherman, Dominic Hollis, Bobcat Outdoors, Mike Sampson, Hillbilly Hippies, Team Snag and Whiskers, Trophy Seekers Outdoors. We've got Look Lady. We got Outdoors in Indiana with Dave Scott. Uh, it's all mine. What's going on, Michelle? Big Wrench Catfishing. That's a member of Big Wrench. What's going on, buddy? Thank you for being a member. We got Catfishing Crappie. Uh, Stonefly 71. Dale Hayslip. Oh, missed that one. Cat Life Outdoors. Dave Funk. You jumped on me, Lyle. We got John Patrick Jr., James Kirkpatrick, John Boy's Catfishing, Blind Squirrel Catfishing. Merrimack Cats, Elizabella Kirkpatrick, Angler of the Ville, The Weekend Angler. We've got Mike Irwin, Miss Paula Smith. We've got Chris from Hooks and Hammocks, Ray Smith, my beautiful wife who let me borrow her hat tonight. <laughs> yeah, you ought to giggle over there, Keith. <laughs> NWMO, what's going on? We got Sherman Tomlinson, Real Gals Fish, 922 Crappy Barbecue, uh, Mr. Gadget, Fishing and Freedom, Catfish Fever and Outdoors, Uncle Lou has made it in, Art from the One Ton Fishing Club. Okay. All crowd tonight. Only 129 <laughs> of them. Murillo Family Fishing. We've got Mr. Tim Molina, Luis Lawson, Silver Fox Fishing, mm -mm. Catfish Bandit, Joe Buck 66, Muskrat Adventures, Whisker Fishing, uh, New School Fishing. Uh, Patriot James, what's going on? Patriot Catfishers of America has made it in. Central Valley Adventures. And this is, just so CVA knows, this ain't about the epic beard that I always keep. <laughs> okay. We're gonna we're gonna leave it to these small time YouTubers over here for tonight. That's a whole other show talking about my beard. All right, I have made it to the bottom. If I miss any, there's Buckeye Catfishing, Ken Smith, and Frank No. There's Lynn, <clears throat> Is that Lance, Kyle, Rustic. If we missed you, we're sorry. We can't hit them all. There's James Kirkpatrick, but um, you have to understand there's a bunch in here tonight. There's over 130 people watching right now. So let's get to some of the questions. And, and folks, if you have a question, put <clears throat> it up there and we'll get to it. If we don't get to it, Put it up again until we do or we run out of time, whichever comes first. We want to get all your questions that we can possibly get answered, and we'll do our best to do that. But these guys have uh, other things to do also, so uh, Keith's got to go to work. So <laughs> <laughs> if it has to be one of us, I'm kind of glad it's him and not me. That's right. But. Uh, hey. Lyle, I do have to say hi to two more folks. We've got the legend of the Mississippi, Danny Stone Outdoors himself. And last but certainly not least, one of the greatest Missourians there has ever been. Well, thank one you. Of the greatest Americans there has ever been, Miss Cindy Stokes. Oh, excuse me. Really? You just, oh, man. Yeah. I know. I'll be doing the show by myself you, here in a minute. You'd be listening. You'd be talking to Dockery too much. <laughs> I got the one. The, I had two or three people message me about one question, and I want to ask all three of you the same question before we get too far along. What is the most important thing that you can do to be successful on YouTube? Let's start with you, Keith. Oh, you had to start with me. The most important thing you can do to be successful. I think, well, there's a lot goes into being successful, but. I think your personality probably plays a big role. And um, if you getting seen 
is one of the things you need to do to be successful. Uh, I say important like your subject thumbnail and just making good videos. I mean, that sounds, you hear that a lot, but that's pretty simple. That's how you successful. I mean, and keep, keep improving. A kid asked me at the, at the TATCOM this year, like, what can I do to get better? I told, I told him what I did to get better. And that was, I decided to improve one thing every week. And that sounds, I mean, it's kind of simple. Like you could learn a transition. You can uh, learn a different way of filming. You could, or sometimes you can buy a mic or you might get a new camera eventually. But if you do, if you improve one thing every week, you've improved 52 things in a year. So you going to get better. I don't know. That's, there's a lot to that question. There really is, but it was the number one question that I had sent to me before the show started. So, Dieter, what do you think? What was the question again? I want to make sure that I got the question right. The What's most the, important. Yeah, ahead. the number one thing that it takes to be successful. I'm going to be honest with you. There's not a number one thing. Uh, I think Keith kind of summarized it pretty good. There's a lot of stuff that has to come together. Um uh, you, you first and foremost have to create content people want to watch. That is the single biggest thing. Whatever niche you're in, somebody has to want to watch it. Your, your vacation, the Yellowstone, might not be it, you know, it, it, but showing somebody how to grow tomatoes that don't have worms in them might be something that appeals to a lot of people. So that's first and foremost. And then once you create that perfect whatever it is, you know, you've got to get somebody to click on and watch it. YouTube's going to do what they can to serve it to the right people. But that's when the thumbnail, first and foremost, uh, after having a great video, that you got to have a thumbnail. Keith creates some great thumbnails with his stuff that catch the eye. People look at it. And, th and then you've got them stopped. But then they got to have a reason to click on it, whether that be the title, what's in the thumbnail, and then it's kind of that circle back to delivering the goods. All the crap with cameras and lights and all that. You can have a successful YouTube channel. I've said this before with an iPhone if you're doing all those other things right. Now, there's a lot of stuff that makes it easier, makes it faster, makes it more efficient, all that kind of stuff. But sometimes people get too spun out on having all this other stuff. Now, in the fishing niche, I'm going to be honest with you, catching fish. It's about that much of it. Uh, catching big fish is about that much of it. If, if, if that's all you're banking your channel on is catching big fish, people are going to... You know, it helps like Keith was saying, have an uh, One of the things with... Uh, did I freeze up? <coughs> but you're better now. All right, I'm going to... I'm back now. This comment here. Uh, there we go. The uh, Richard Gene, the fishing machine, great example. Uh, he catches fish. Sometimes he catches big ones. Sometimes he catches little ones. But he's got a personality and a charisma that he's blessed with, lucky to have, and it endears people to him. So there's a lot that goes into. I don't think there's one thing you need to focus on. You need to be focused on a lot of stuff. That's a great answer, Dieter. Bob, what would you say to that question? Uh, my answer to that question would be, I'll let you know. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm the baby on the screen here as far as YouTube channels go. Um, but, I, you know, I think for me personally, I think I make better videos when I'm having fun. I try to have fun on screen and on camera and, you know, not try to be too serious about what I'm doing. But like I said, I, I would not consider myself successful right now. I hope to be someday. But, uh, you know, I think my number one thing right now is just, I'm doing something right now that I, I enjoy and I hope it comes through in my video. So that's my well, answer. I think it does. And, and um, they really didn't ask me, but I think if you need to be yourself, True. don't be phony, don't be something that you're not, don't try to be something you're not just be you and people will accept you for who you are or they won't. Yep. Yep. Indeed. All right. Chad, what was the question that was up there? 
All right. Fishing and Freedom asks, do you all think educational or entertainment content gets more views? Yes. I mean, honestly, you, you, ideally you got both. If you can have both of them. And I think that's like, I go back to Richard Jean. Everybody knows who he is. He gives you some great information because he's a heck of a fisherman, but he's also entertaining. Uh, he, he, you know, with his little thing that he does at the end of it. And, you know, just the way he is doing there with some of this stuff, he's entertaining too. If you can do both, that's the thing about mine. I'm not that entertaining. I can throw out some good information, but I don't consider myself entertaining. I wish I had that. Keith, I think, does an excellent job with that. He's got some goofiness that comes out there. And, you know, he's not afraid to act stupid and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And he puts a lot into his editing too that plays it up. So I think you can have both and there's a place yeah. for both of them. I was going to say the same thing. I was going to say the same thing. I agree. Um, I think entertainment might, well, I think education might be easier if you're unknown because that's the thing about YouTube people don't understand. It's like YouTube's not about how big a fish you caught, how cool you are, like how you look on camera. It's not about you. It's about the people watching. And if you can offer them something, the want to come back, you're better off. It's like if you have a store and you just sell what you want to sell, you're not going to do too good. But if you sell what everybody wants, you know, you're going to sell out. So YouTube's about the people watching, not about the YouTuber. And and I agree with Dieter. If you can do education and make it a hybrid, like an entertaining educational video, I try to do that. It just ramps it up even more and makes it a little better. Yeah, I agree, Bob. I think it is tougher to be entertaining than it is to educate people. I think entertaining uh, is is a lot harder because I think with educating people and fishing, you're kind of passing along what you know. With entertaining, you've got to come up with a shtick that works, uh, something, and that can be that can be a lot of pressure. Video after video after video after video. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be my question. Do you think, because, and I, I've, I've kind of noticed this, you know, with the growth of the catfish community, right, is some people have that, that niche of being able to articulate and educate, but maybe their personality doesn't come across as some of the more rambunctious and light up the screen type, right? Do you think we, people need to realize that about themselves and what they're doing with their videos? Yeah, everybody's different. I'll tell you another way you can be entertained. Dieter, Dieter's actually more entertained than he thinks because I don't think funny's the only type of entertainment. Like, that's I, just one I type. And, uh, but a lot of things I see a lot of little YouTubers do, and I had to learn – was like, don't just sit there and talk and show yourself for five minutes. Uh, when you're talking, show people what you're talking about. It's called B-roll. You know, your A-rolls, you're talking. Cut out away from you, and you talk about, I went fishing, and I caught 10 fish. Show the 10 fish. Show you fishing while you're talking, but you can continue to talk and show other things, and it makes the video more entertaining. You know, if that makes sense. And, Chad, to answer your question, self-awareness, is very important. You need to know what your strong points are, what your weak points are. Because go back to the original thing, Lyle asked, what makes a successful channel? You kind of have to define what successful <clears throat> is. And, you know, if that's trying to get to certain number of subscribers, views, money, whatever, you got to kind of define what that is. And then you need, you do need to be self-aware as far as what your strong points and weak points are. If you if you don't have time to put out but one video a month, you need to understand that there's going to be limitations on how much success you can have doing that yeah. unless you really ratchet and ramp the level up in what you're doing. So, yeah, I think you need to really have some critical analysis of yourself on just what your capabilities are, what you can do, what you want to do. Not everybody wants to commit the time that – you know, Keith does, I do to doing this. It's, it's not for everybody and you shouldn't 
you shouldn't judge your success based on how many subscribers you got or what somebody else has got or what views or all that. It's, it's, it's whatever you're into it for. And I know that's kind of a, can be kind of a feel good question, but it can kind of or feel good answer, but it could also be a kick in the teeth for some people because, you know, that's kind of the reality of being self-aware about all that kind of stuff will make your journey easier if that's something you want to do. And there's nothing wrong with just putting up your family fishing trip videos. You don't have to create, you know, this perfect masterpiece like Keith puts out. Where's your silver play button, by the way? Why did you not put that silver play button <laughs> over your shoulder to rub it in our right face there. during this whole thing? I was I was very shocked it went back there. So, Keith, that's yeah. a big that's a big deal right there. Bob, what's your opinion on that? Um <clears throat> Gosh, what was the question again? I've been listening. Uh, <laughs> talking oh, about talking about success <laughs> is that what I think? I think uh, I'll add this to what they said too. That, like I said, I'm the baby here as far as YouTube channels go. But consistency. Some weeks I have to sit down in front of this computer and force myself to edit. I mean, you just you got to be you got to put out videos every week, and you've got to be consistent. With, with doing the videos and, and do the edit, you know, whether you want to or not. It, it, but once I get into it, like I'm always trying to tell a story with my videos. So once I get into it, I, I rarely like make a plan. I'm sure Dieter probably plans out his trips maybe, but I'll sit down with the video footage I have and try to tell a story. And, and a lot of times the story will form halfway through the editing process. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, wow, okay, that, that kind of works. That kind of flows. And uh, I, I'm going to say right now that I've watched both Dieter and Keith, their videos for years now, and I've kind of taken what they're doing, you know, camera angles and stuff like that and watching it and paying attention. And if you – I think if you want to be successful at making YouTube videos, production videos, you kind of need to, you know, pay attention to the behind-the-scenes stuff and – and watch the nuts and bolts of what the YouTubers are doing to kind of, you know, to help your videos out too. But don't don't copycat them, but, you know, take what they're doing and, and apply it to your videos and tell your own story. So that's kind of where, where I'm at on that. You know, before we get too far along, a hundred years ago, I knew Dieter Melhorn online. I was fortunate enough to meet Keith at the very first Catfish Conference, and I hounded him from that day on to be on Catfish Weekly. And he finally, he told me, he said, I'll do it one day. And he did. And I'm so happy that, that he he did because we had a great show, just like we're going to have tonight. But Dieter told me when I told him what we was doing with Catfish Weekly, he said the number one thing to be successful for you in that venue will have to be consistent. you got to be there every week and i took him to heart i really did i thought man dieter i knew dieter melhorn when he wasn't dieter melhorn fishing he was wily cat man you know a lot of people don't even know dieter was a wily cat man mm -hmm. but he was he had videos out for a long time before it was dieter melhorn fishing he said you've got to be consistent that's the number one advice i can give you if you're on every week people will watch you and that was eight years ago and and that what you said there about having videos up, I have had a space on YouTube forever, but right. mm -hmm. I never had a channel. I want what I consider a channel. There is a big difference between me putting videos up like I did back then. I'd throw one up and then put a link to it on Catfish One and, or send it to somebody, <laughs> whatever. There's a yeah. big difference between doing that and just basically using you know youtube as a place to store a video and having a channel and there's nothing wrong with either one of them i mean if no. you just want to store videos up there it wasn't until much later on that i realized that you know you could you could actually build a real show uh you could build a real brand around it and you know that's that's something for people to keep in mind i i i think sometimes we get too wrapped up into got to be the best got to do this you got to get to that enjoyed it's just like with fishing uh you know we get too wrapped up in some of that sometime too the biggest fish personal best this personal this, yeah that. That, that's enjoy the I, enjoy the process and the journey along the way i agree we've had several people ask questions about editing products what you guys yep. use to to edit edit uh, there's another great question it, What's the i think that ties into it 
Yeah, it does. So, um, I, in my opinion, and, and you guys are the experts at this, not me, but for editing, it's got to be something for somebody starting out that that's easy to figure out. If it's if it's um, one of the premier editing uh, softwares on the market, the average guy is not is going to take forever. By the time he gets it figured out, he's done lost interest. Yeah, it's got to be something yeah. easy enough that everybody can use. So, uh, yeah. what do you think, Bob? Um, I started out using iMovie and iMovie still works great, but I found one called Movavi Video Editor Plus mm-hmm. that I use and uh, I like it better than iMovie and I've been using that for, I don't know, probably eight to 12 months now and uh, it's simple and easy to use and uh, I've tried DaVinci Resolve and I don't need all the bells and whistles because I've just decided to keep my videos simple and doing simple transitions and and not you know get into all the fancy stuff so for me personally i like movavi video editor and one of the reasons i like it is like the ability to sync audio um when i'm on my tracks you can select two clips and if you got two different angles in most cases as long as the audio video video uh, the audio is decent it will sync it and that makes the editing process a whole lot shorter and easier mm-hmm. that's nice yeah. And how long a video do you think is a magic number, roughly? For me, 10 to 20 minutes, um, 25, I don't know. It's probably longer than necessary, but yeah. I, I'm going to shock everybody. I know Key says longer. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> do it. I, I think that six to seven minute is an ideal range to get people to click on and watch it because there's some science behind that with just how much time people want to commit to videos now. And when they see that, well, some people, I, you know, I I laughed at Steve Douglas when I first started my channel because he was talking about putting out these 35 minute videos. And I'm like, nobody's going to watch 35 minutes of people fishing. And then I started doing 30 minute videos and people were watching 18, 19 minutes of it, which is amazing. Um, it is. But YouTube seems to not serve that stuff out as much. There are some anomalies. I've got a night fishing live video, which makes no sense why it gets served out the way it does. But most of the time, that shorter range seems, especially in today's world of, of TikTok videos and YouTube shorts and things that yeah. are very, very quick. People want to see something, go to the next thing, see something, go to the next thing. So that seems to be it, it. And I think Keith has said this too. We talk all the time about stuff. You're better off making a six minute video that's really, really good and really well edited and well put together than trying to drag it out to 15 or 20 minutes. And it's eh. So it, it, it YouTube recognizes it. It's amazing. They can tell by the way people watch it, how they watch it, when they get out of it. The algorithm is pretty amazing in that part. So that's my, I think shorter and good, better is better than longer and less quality. My only problem with that, though, is that if you catch a lot of fish in a video, it's hard to eliminate fish out of a video or leave fish out. And, you know, it's uh, to me... I, 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 I know what you're saying about the analytics and what YouTube's mm-hmm. pushing, but I, I I find it real difficult that when I catch six or seven fish to to you know cut it down to six minutes. Can you yeah. do that? Can you put that many fish in a six minute video? It's tough. Well, uh, I've said this before. Keith knows this that there's a difference between a fishing video and a video about fishing. And if you're just chronicling a fishing trip, yeah, I mean it's 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 a different deal than trying to do something that is maybe more in the more educationally end or it, 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 it it's going to vary with the video. Yeah, you're right. If you got a, and I've got some of those videos out there that are 25, 30 minutes. It's a lot of fish. People like watching it. I, I it's, if nothing else, they got it playing in the background and they're just kind of, you know, looking at it leisurely, but I think it depends on the content and what you're actually <laughs> trying to do with your channel, where you're trying to go with it on that. That's getting pretty in depth into that's beyond level one. Let's start a YouTube channel. That's getting on in there to where you have a silver play button like Keith and you're thinking like him. <laughs> <laughs> you feel bad. 
I think anything to add to that, Keith? I think that's a loaded question. I think uh, there ain't no one right way to do nothing. It's like I think first of all, I'm I'm not being smart, so don't take it that way. But everybody says be smart. algorithm, the algorithm, the algorithm, this, the algorithm that. YouTube's people, like real people, and the better, the more you can make a video that real people want to watch. The longer they watch it, the more the algorithm likes you. It's not the algorithm that likes you; it's people. And you, you got to kind of remember that. Quit thinking you can trick an algorithm. You can't <laughs> trick real people. They either like it or they don't like it. True. And like Bobcat was saying, you can edit the video mm. in, with six fish of, to six minutes, but you have to learn to be real selective in your editing process. Like you don't show every second that you reeled that fish in and you skip. I started learning that years ago. Like, I was watching my videos because I was really small channel, and I thought I was sitting around thinking I didn't really need to show myself getting those scales out of that box yeah. in my boat. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'd cut that out, and I'd go through and I would look at things and like I really didn't need that on there, and I'd cut it down. But what Dieter said was kind of right too. Me, I find that longer videos do better. Like if they're seventeen minutes to to 12 minutes they seem like my best running videos and i don't know why maybe it, it could be coincidence because a lot of stuff youtube judges you by is like like i had a video not long ago it said i had i still had 80 86 percent of the audience after the first 30 seconds which is really high you wouldn't think so but usually they drop like really fast cause like they accidentally clicked on the video or something like that. But it judges you by all kinds of stuff. So it's really kind of hard to tell what the idea. But Logan Paul proved he, he got millions of subscribers doing a video every day, and they were all five minutes. When everybody was saying you needed 10-minute videos, he done it and proved that, that that's not always the case, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody's different how you're doing it. Yeah. You just had to experiment. Like, I always upload, I always post my videos Sunday evening, and this week I posted it Sunday morning, and it kind of did better, and it shocked me, because, you know, I, there's more traffic on YouTube in the evening, but I thought, well, I will see what happens if I post it early. You always need to be a spearman. I think right. you're right about that. Always experiment. Uncle Lou says, as a newbie, should you do short, simple videos and work up? Or just try hitting a grand slam off the bat. It's like I said earlier. I think you'd be better off making a. And there he went. He gone. He gone. He's keeping you in suspense. <laughs> you I should be better it? off. <laughs> did, I, did I go? Did I disappear? Am I unfrozen? Am I unfrozen? Hey, yeah, I'm you're unfrozen. unfrozen. You got me now. We lost you at better <laughs> off. This way. <laughs> so it's like a Verizon commercial. Uh, you're better off doing a really good short video than you are something long and hoping it works. That would be my take on it. And I'll be honest with you, I learned that because I didn't do that in the beginning. The stuff I did in the beginning was longer. It was a lot of fishing. It was, you know, I, but like most people, I was figuring it out, playing around. And what you learn on YouTube from the YouTube gurus doesn't necessarily apply in the fishing niche, especially when you get tied into fishing. Uh, it, it applies in some areas. Some of the stuff works, but uh, it doesn't always. The biggest thing is if you're watching YouTube videos and watching people fishing, uh, if you take away anything from that is don't do what you're watching. Find something different that's kind of unique to you. And that's, you hear that with everything in life, you know, but especially in this creative world, it's you're better off than just being another guy fishing. Come up with some other twist on it. Uh, what yeah. that is, it's going to depend on you and what your you know thing is. That was something Keith told me with, you know, he was looking at some of my stuff. Keith's a good critic of my work, and I always appreciate the feedback I get from him. But, you know, he gave me some, you know, pointers and advice on some of the stuff that I was doing that worked, 
and sticks and resonates with him and resonates with other people. So, and it's different than what everybody else is doing. It's it, and it's not the fishing stuff. It's not the fishing stuff. See how I snuck that in there? Fishing stuff. It's <laughs> not the fishing on the boat catching fish part. It's the other <laughs> stuff. And uh, so, so yeah. Sometimes it's something like that. Everybody's got their own thing. You may get out there and sing and dance and write a song about fishing. That may work. That may be your thing. You may be somebody that sits up there and complains about everything in the world and dogs barking. I wonder who that is. But anyway, but it works. It sticks. There's a group of people that'll watch it. So, uh, you know, you can find whatever your little niche is. Now, with that said, as Keith knows, he's in a good little area to where his stuff reaches a lot more people. Uh, he's got a wider group than us guys that are in the catfish world. And so I say all this stuff to say this, if you can figure out a way to get people that don't give a crap about catching catfish to watch one of your videos, you're golden. You you've, you've cracked the golden egg. If you can figure out a way to do that, because that's when you transcend the catfish community and get into something bigger than that small group of people. And you might get a silver play button. Mike. You want Keith? <laughs> Keith, they're on you, buddy. I'm gonna sit. I have it sitting right there. I'm gonna come get his button and put it right in my background one day. So, back to the, back the question, question again. It's been, it's, been, it's been about five minutes. I mean, longer than Dieter's. What's the question again? Video so you guys never forgot it. Uh, but <laughs> for Bobcat or Keith, whichever one, um, short and simple, starting out or Grand slam off the bat. What's your take? I think uh, when you're starting out, like, <laughs> I agree with Dieter. Don't get me wrong. I agree. I think a grand slam is better. If it's a two-minute grand slam, it's better than a 10-minute board video. But I think when you start, <clears throat> you just do it. Because, like, there's a lot of pressure on you. You never filmed yourself. You don't like cameras. You don't understand how to upload you get you learn how to edit i think you should just do it first because for a long time a lot of the nick nimmons and people they were saying like be consistent be consistent be and everybody was saying yeah they said just post a lot of videos you'll grow but that's not why they say that they say that because it takes like 50 videos before you start to get good at editing, filming, you start learning more Absolutely. and more and more. And at first, I think you just need to do it. And then Dieter's exactly right. I heard Mr. B say something that made a lot of sense one time. He said, he says, it's easier to get a million views on one video than it is to get 100,000 views on 50 videos. And what he meant by that is like, you make 50 videos, you don't work over a year if you're doing one a week. And or you worked about a year and you worked hard on 50 videos that got 100,000 views. He's just saying if you took more time and put more work into that one, you could actually get a million on one easier than making 50 videos. That's good. It's just pretty good videos. Like make a grand slam one and you can, you can, you, I mean, you'd make just as much money, you get just as many views, you get just as many subscribers. You know what I mean? You probably get more subscribers actually. So what he's saying makes sense, and it, it's it's right. But I but all I'm saying is, a newbie that just started make videos, don't give up. Like you learn as you go, you get better as you go. Is it hard for you to say that Dieter's right? It would be for me. He's right about the quality. <laughs> I think well, me and Dieter argued for like four years. I he would say consistency is number one. I say no quality is number one, and we kept arguing. <laughs> And one day I was like, okay, you consistently, <laughs> I told him one day, he probably, I said, okay, there, you consistently make crappy videos and I'll just like make one a month that's good and I'll beat you every time because quality mm -hmm. and consistency is very important though. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. It's not that it's not important. I think quality is just more important. And what he means by quality Everything is the qual. Yeah, it, it, it's encompassing, but it's the quality of the content of having some value. It doesn't mean it has to look like it was shot by Spielberg. No, it can still it be has to be. Yeah, you yeah. can still do it with an iPhone. Or, it just has to be something be that people want to see. 
it could be twice as better though if you would just record it with a Samsung Galaxy over an iPhone because uh, you we guys go. are losing points here right here now. Here we go. I got I got I got three lenses on my iPhone. Look how that that's three times as good. That's it? Two times. That's it? How about that? How about, how about that? There you go, there, Dieter. I've got. Hey, five. Hey, I got a phone. I don't even know how to use it. So. <laughs> No, he's right. It's quality doesn't just mean like the most important thing is get you a good speaker. I mean, a microphone first, because that's more important than your camera. But quality is not really that stuff's good to improve, too. But quality is more like telling the story, learn, like editing it, cutting things down. A secret. Nobody will probably ask this, but one of the secret, one of the first secrets I learned was the Hollywood people. I can't remember what they ever remember what they call that rule, but there's a rule to where every four to five seconds something needs to change. And YouTubers like takes them forever to learn that. And they'll show the same thing for 30 seconds. But something needs to change where it's an angle. Like you can show the same thing, but change angles or pop up, click subscribe, or or do something different because it resets our brain. Like if you watch Duck Dynasty, it was the number one show for 10 years. But if you watch it and you count, you cannot get to five seconds and that scene's done changed. Yep. You'll be like one, two, three, one, two, three, one. It just changes all the time and it's consistently a lot of cuts. That's a golden nugget right there, guys. And That's, you need to I agree. And the better you can get at that, it's more interesting. It's easier to watch. I see James Dockery Fishing has joined the show. He must be going to take pointers so he can start his YouTube channel back up. We can only hope. That's my wife. <laughs> my data impression. That's my wife. So we don't. We don't. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to ask Keith this question because it's about him. But so, to Bob and um, Dieter, what is your all your all's favorite parts about making videos? Go ahead, Bob. I like the fishing. <laughs> when, I, when I when I get in when I get in here and stay edit, I know earlier I said that I, sometimes I have to force myself to edit. But when when the video starts forming and and the scenes are you know are happening, I'm putting them together and that looks good and the, the audio is good and everything. I mean, telling the story through the editing is I really enjoy the artistic part of, of it and you know I. I you, you once that story starts forming and the pieces start falling into place and you find just the right music and get it at just the right level in the background i i really enjoy that coming together and and then you know building up to a crescendo at the end and so i mean i like the art of it i enjoy the editing process you have to if you if you just hate editing videos you're not going to do it you know so you got to you got to enjoy it i think yeah well, I'm not uh, to enjoy it, but I really <laughs> don't enjoy it yet. <laughs> I'm not like Keith. Keith has always said he liked doing yeah. editing. Well, that's telling the story, kind of. It Peter is. froze up again. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's back. He's back. You DSL dater. I like the editing. Uh, it's a grind. Uh, especially as I've changed a bunch of stuff recently on the way I do videos. Uh, it, it's it's more labor intensive. Uh, higher shot counts mean a lot more. You got to have a lot more video to choose from. It takes a lot more time to make the cuts, uh, find the video. Uh, luckily, I've got a massive archive of video now that I can pull from, which is great. But I like that part of the creative. Not coming from an editing background, I actually enjoy it. It's, it's actually fun. But it's one of those things. It's kind of like working out, going to the gym. Once you get there and you're working out, you feel great. You feel better. You're happy to be there. Says who? And by God, you'll find every excuse in the world not to go or I'm running late today or I can't do this or whatever. But it's kind of the same way with editing. Once you're in there doing it, it's fine. Once all the eggs are in the basket and you're ready to go. But. See now we're talking. See you—you you replace buffet with gym, and 
Lyle and I are right here with you. We're there. You need to add truth to that that sentence. We're down to 22 viewers now. Yeah. (laughs) I've got a question for the two guys on the the two experts on the panel. What do you need? When y'all are importing your videos from your cameras, however many cameras you're using, how do you organize the footage? I finally, after a year, like figured out how to like label my video clips. And of course I shoot, I shoot in the, um, what do they call it? Uh, where I stop the camera and start it after every fish looping. I, I loop. Okay. And I know a lot of people don't like looping, but I finally figured out after a year how to organize my, my video files to where it makes sense when I drop them into my video editor and it makes the editing process so much easier. How do y'all handle the organization of your video files? Go ahead, Keith. Um, I don't have one, but I use a, I like a Samsung TS, I think it's T5, T5, something like that. But it's a, it's an external drive, so I don't have to put everything on my computer. And I know that ain't the question, but I started using those because you can hook them to your phone. You can hook it to your computer. And uh, I started a while back. I make files. I make a folder, rather, ever for every video. If it's stuff I want to keep, I got folders that say green screens. I got folders that say music, folders that say uh, sound effects. And when I get another drive, I had to transfer my music, my sound effects, my green screens to the new drive and leave a little bit of room for that. Because when I'm editing, I can just click on the external driver, grab, go into sound effects, grab the ones I want, go to the green screens, if that makes sense. I put everything in folders. <clears throat> then I got a complete, a complete video folder, too, of all my old videos. So That's basically Dieter, what I do. Dieter, Dieter taught me that because I used to just keep all my clips. And he was like, why don't you keep the old videos? I was like, because... If I ever did again, I'd just re-edit it because I could do it better now. But it is a lot easier keeping the whole video up when I start yeah. trying. And that's what I do. I dump, I take all the footage, I dump it to an external drive, and you should always back your stuff up because there's a good story I'll tell you off air about that. <clears throat> but I edit off an external drive and out, of, out of, in that folder, it's broken down, down depending on whether it's if it's just a fishing trip. I just put everything in there and I'm able to pluck the three different cameras that I use. Now, if I'm doing a video on the best fishing reel in the world, I'll have whatever the audio clips are. And then I will have the B roll all put into a folder so that I can import it from one source. The thing that was getting to be the big pain was having stuff on four or five different hard drives. Some of it archived, some of it here, some of it there. And I've got five different, hard drives daisy chain to the computer dump it all onto one hard drive one that you can operate off of and it's a lot easier oh wow that's a bunch of technical voodoo stuff that doesn't appeal to anybody but out of all that that i just said (laughs) back your stuff up is the most important so what's the easiest way to back your stuff up redundant just a redundant system to have two hard drives i mean if you got the money buy solid state drives just because they're less likely to have corruption issues um, but and they're faster and uh they yeah. seem to have less issues down the road but yeah having two two places to put it keeping it on your computer is not usually a good idea if you uh unless you absolutely have to just because it takes up so much space when you start getting into some of these videos and like I am running three cameras on the boat, you've got 70 or 80 gigs of, you know, raw content and it just gobbles up a bunch of space. And then when you're doing like me and Keith, you may be juggling three, four or five different projects at the same time that you're working on a little bit, waiting to shoot something here for that. And you've kind of got them all in limbo that can eat up a lot of space. So you're better off just having it on the separate hard drive. I'll throw out there. If you hit, if you're, Primarily use using your phone, have enough cloud storage because when your phone falls into the bottom of Lake Wiley, <laughs> whatever you are over your data and it didn't back up, you've lost. Mm. Uh, yeah. 
don't Pro drop tip. your phone into Lake Wiley. That's why I like the Samsung T5 I was talking about because you can hook it into your computer. You can plug it right into your Samsung and transfer files off your phone onto it. Like you that can back up. Because I edited it with my phone for the first couple of years. I did YouTube. I did all my videos with my phone. And uh, then I went to a computer. So how many v- how many camera um, do you think you need shooting a video? How many different camera angles do you guys think? Oh, you just need one camera. You just... <laughs> You just need to move. No. Yeah, move. <laughs> you can get by with just one camera. I mean, that's really all you need. But yeah. you need to be. Uh, let me say this. Okay. There are videos out there of people building a cabin in the woods where it's a wide shot and they cut every 10 or 15 seconds of them building a cabin and then they'll cook a meal. And there's very little said, very little changes, and they'll have. 2.9 million views for some things. There is a place for that and it will work. But, you know, I think in the fishing world, I haven't seen that. It's not going to be widespread successful. Let me put it to you that way. Just the, you know, <clears throat> one locked off camera fishing. It's hard to make that work. It's hard to get people to watch it. Keith. Um, I think one, I think one camera's fine. I don't think you need nothing more than a phone, honestly. I think, I mean, I got, and that sounds hypocritical because I got a lot of cameras, just like Peter, but, but actually, I'll tell you a little secret. Like, I tell people all the time, but it's still something you would think. Half of my It's not a little is, secret then, Keith, if, I, if you tell I, people I don't all the tell time. tell everybody on live streams, okay? <laughs> I tell people that ask me, I'm honest, but. Half of all of my footage is filmed with my phone. Like, like I got a $3,500 Canon. I've got a Sony. Got a lot of GoPros and a 360 camera. I got all kinds of cameras. But half of all of my footage, every video, is shot with my cell phone. Hmm. People are like, really? I'm like, yeah, you mix it. And people don't even notice for one thing. And on YouTube, people like that natural look. Some some big, huge YouTubers still use phones because it's just not YouTube if it's too professional. And uh, and plus, your phone's easy. Like, you can hold it while you're talking or doing something or you're out, you know, getting something at Lowe's. You can just whoop out your phone and film the price and show something. Mm-hmm. It's just so much easier carrying a big old camera. So there's nothing wrong with a phone. But I like Dieter. You could do it all with your phone, but change of angles are more important than which cameras you're using. You know, I I tell people all the time they boat fish. They put a GoPro up in a static position. That's great for getting takedowns or for certain things. But grab your phone, like use that GoPro and grab your phone, and when your buddy's reeling in the fish, get a different angle of it. That way, you got two angles to work with on your video. That makes sense. <laughs> Bob, do you want to? I shoot with um, uh, I shoot with two cameras. I've tried shooting with three, and I about lost my mind trying to edit the footage. <laughs> um, I I shoot with uh, two GoPro Hero Sevens, which overheat all the time in the summertime, so they get aggravated, and you end up pulling with your camera more than you do fishing. But uh, I shoot with two GoPros, uh, and I've got to wear. For the audio, I like to, when Keith was at CatCon, he had one of those little neck things on. And I actually got where I love that thing. Man, it puts the camera yeah. right here where your voice is right there when you're talking. Mm-hmm. The audio is great, and you're not wearing the man bra. The yeah. you <laughs> around your strap, around your chest. I yeah. hate that thing. Can't it's wrong with the man bra? Yeah, a bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but I, I tried to i mean i'm always trying to i'm always when i'm fishing i'm always trying to think about the angle of the camera and if i if i got a fish and i'm reeling it in i'm trying you know i'll try to make sure that's a hard thing to remember to do in the excitement of reeling the fish in is to move the camera where it's pointed at the action because you're moving jumping around the boat trying to land the fish and and uh, so i've had to like force myself and i'm like you know, in some of my older videos, I'm like, dang, I missed all the action because the camera was pointed at the console. You know, it's like I'm talking and there's no video. 
So you have to get into the mindset of, of making sure that the camera is like the other person in your boat that, that needs to see what's going on and move it. So, you know, when you got the chest strap or the, the neck thing you own, you always got that video right there, but then have a different angle. And I've watched a lot of Dieter's videos and, and you know how he's swapping angles all the time. And I love that. So I've tried to incorporate some of that into my, my videos too. And have like, like somebody said earlier about people's interest, you know, like, you know, try to change the perspective every five seconds or something or change something so people don't get bored when they're watching the video. So I think that goes a long way. I'll I tell you what I learned this year at Mendota. We had three GoPros going and Cindy had a little camera and we had two phones. And if you don't watch what you say, the audio shows up on every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, that's just, it shows up on every <clears throat> one. And <laughs> you got to edit it out or not use it. One of the two. And <laughs> yeah, then you have some live footage of some stuff that didn't need to be public. Oh, yeah, that's a long time ago. But, yeah, that was really bad. <laughs> yeah, I remember that conversation. <laughs> that was a long time ago. We got excited. Uh, <laughs> well, that brings me up to talking about lives. And even if it's intentional or not, Lyle. Yeah. Um, so what do you guys think of doing the live streams? Um, that's obviously became, you know, a big thing in the community the last couple of years, thanks to COVID and pe more people getting involved. But what's your takes on it? Um, I know a few of you do and more than others and some don't at all. So <laughs> I'll be honest with you. When I started my channel, I could not wait to live stream a trip. I think I was probably one of the first few people in the catfish community that did that. You and, and I, I, I thought it was going to be the, the end all save all. And I was going to rock it to the top of the world, being able to live stream a fishing trip. And it didn't work out that way. Uh, I think there's, I think with the way things are now, I think there's, I think it hits a niche of people to be perfect line. It's just like a lot of things. And I think there's a lot of people that enjoy it. It's just for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't, they don't try to serve it out there to people. And I think part of it is like watching, I've equated to this before. It's like watching live PD when live PD was on air. You would sit there and watch that and it would be boring as crap. You're just waiting for some thug to get the heck beat out of him by the police. And maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But when it's on replayed from the week before, two weeks before, it doesn't mean as much. There's something subconsciously about it being live that means something. And like I said earlier, I've only had one live stream that for some reason keeps getting served out there. But most of them don't really get put back out there after, you know, later on. So you have to basically build your brand, build your channel, I think, around doing live stuff. So yeah. that's I don't I don't think it helps build a channel per se in the sense like I don't think it would benefit my channel. I don't think it would benefit Keith. Crickets, crickets. I thought it throws <laughs> up. Crickets. No, uh, Lyle, I, I don't know if you saw my text, but we, we have a really strong um rainstorm coming through right now so i'm muting myself as oh, okay. as can. That, that's fine i think uh i seen a funny comment in the comment section it said the reason you can't do lives is because you keep freezing up data <laughs> <laughs> it's because i talk too much and the computer can't keep up with all my jaw jacking that's what the problem I, is i agree i think lives are great. like I got to probably do them occasionally because I think lives lives are for your subscribers. I mean, <coughs> lives are, are not. It's hard to grow with lives. I like I I suggested some people. There's a there's a podcast I listen to. Well, he never says who's on the podcast, but he's always got a guest. He names the podcast like like how to get a viral video, how to do this. And he'll have somebody on that did a viral video, but he'll never name it after the person. Cause, and I think that's really smart because he's making his titles more like a video than like a live stream. 
Yeah. If that makes sense. Because lies are kind of for the people that already watch you more. Mm -hmm. But I think you can grow doing lives. Oh, well, yeah. I, <clears throat> I, think, I think you can't say nothing's impossible because, like, I don't, I don't know. It, being different is probably one of the best things you can be on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. different than everybody else. And yeah. you could, somebody could dial in a live and blow up. I think it's possible if they did it right. You know, That's we was uh, we was at Mississippi River Monsters years ago. Doc Lang and Cindy and I was fishing a tournament down there. We was pre-fishing one day and we decided we was going to go live. And I think we went live on Facebook. I don't really remember now, but that was some time ago. I didn't even know how to do it. Cindy set the phone up. And within 10 minutes, there was 900 some people watching it. I didn't know at the time. I didn't know there's 900 people knew who we was, you know, and it just exploded. And uh, then we lost internet connection and never done it again for whatever reason while we was down there. Well, you know, for one reason, we was trying to find stuff and we was showing everybody where we was at and didn't know we was doing that. And the next thing you know, Cindy's got a fish on and up beside us come, uh, Bill Dance and Jeff and Dodd and a bunch of them, and they was chewing on me for not going after the fish. She didn't, didn't know that she caught the fish right underneath the boat. I mean, she was just had to, had her line straight down, and that fish hit, and, and old Dodd says, go to that fish. Don't make her work so hard for that fish. I said, damn, you think it's the first fish she ever caught? <laughs> but, you know, we had a big time with it, and, and yeah. at the time, like I say, 900 <laughs> people watching that was a huge number in those days. Yep, and yep. Uh, we, we didn't ever do a whole lot of it after that. We just wanted to see how it worked. What about downloading and <coughs> editing the best parts into a shorter production video? I think that would work. I've done that before. I don't want to tell you something. The guy on the screen, Danny Stone Outdoors, he can pull a live off. That guy is hilarious to watch. <laughs> he is fun to watch. I mean... I call him the mouth of the Mississippi. Yeah. He's I entertaining for sure. I I suggested that to Chad one time, actually. I think Shh. I told him. <laughs> don't, don't tell everybody all the secrets. <laughs> this, is, this is a partial information. I, I think you could take lives, re-edit them, and make videos out of them. Yeah. I think you could. Because the difference between video and live is you you cut all the boring stuff out of a video, you know, in the lives. And I, and I don't mean that disrespectful, but, like, Dieter keeps freezing up. We get rid of that. Dieter wouldn't freeze up on my video, you know, because I can right. edit all that out. Yeah. yeah. Keith, since that's bothering you, let, let me uh, – let me. I was just an example. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> that was just for you, buddy. <laughs> Dieter, I know that you've been live – because mm -hmm. a lot of times when you're live, I go in and I'm a moderator on your on your thing. And sometimes you're live for a short period of time and sometimes you're live for a long mm -hmm. period of time. And if I remember correctly, you've went into some of those videos and cut out some of them parts before and used them. Actually, what I'm doing is I'm filming with my other cameras while I'm going live. So I'm able to take that and use it that way. I think if you're going to do lives, you've got to be an entertainer. That's where you get into the entertaining side. You can do some education, uh, but you got to be able to entertain people. It is like. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Somebody screenshot that. Chicken. <laughs> Damn it, Dieter. <laughs> I, want to, I want you to try something. I'm going to go on a rant here in a second, and I want you to pull me up full screen and see if I freeze up then. I think my mouth is too fast for all the video processing. Let me up. pick the topic. I got a message from, from James Dockery. When you go on your rant, let me pick the topic. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to try something. I'm going to see. Keep talking. I'm looking at questions here, but they're going so fast. I'm having a hard time keeping up. I don't say, Lyle, do you have any of your, you said you might have had a couple. I know we only got to your first and we've kind of been. Um, yeah, I think we touched on parts of, of the other ones too, but um, pretty much everything's been covered that, that we had. I'm trying to see if there's any in, um, in chat that we've missed. And if there is, um, believe me, we're very sorry. We're trying to keep, but chat's really running. 
Yeah. Friday night, and I would like to thank Jody for for posting everybody's links up there tonight. We appreciate that so thank very you, much. Jody. Well, I did see like you know Greenwell Fishing had asked you know for those that do lives, should people go back and and update like how many fish they caught, um, stuff like that? Do you think stuff like that helps with what you were saying earlier, Dieter? Right, a lot of lives once you're done, they're dead. You, you get some views for maybe a day or so, and then they, they're they done. Um, he's got a very serious – oh, wait, he's, he's frozen again. Yeah, um, there you go. <laughs> what are you guys' thought, thoughts on that? <laughs> he, but, Peter, did you hear anything I said? No, I tried switching over Wi-Fi connection. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. I'll, re I'll repeat real quick. So with the, li the live streaming and stuff – after people are finished, do you feel like it's a good idea to go back and update information, like how many fish you've caught and yada, yada? Um, because like what you were saying earlier, live streams are usually pretty dead after the first, say, 24 hours or so. Yeah. Yeah. I They're kind of one and done for me when I've done them. I mean, I just kind of. You know, like Keith was saying, they're kind of entertainment for your viewers more than anything. Yeah. The the regular viewers out there, you'll pick up a few new people here that'll jump in on it, and you may draw some people to you. But most of the time, it's uh, it's just for the people who are already, you know, subscribed. That's a good question. So, what would you all feel is the reasonable expectation to hit one hundred thousand? 10,000 silver platinum. Here's, here's what I've said all along. Completed. Subscribers are for your ego. Views are for your bank account. There you go. I think it's going to be harder and harder to get subscribers from what people at YouTube are saying, just because they've gotten better and better at giving people what they want to see. Uh, it's going to be a lot harder moving forward to rank, you know, knock up subscribers. I don't think you're going to see the exponential growth that you used to see with it. So don't get locked up on that. Look at how many people are watching your videos. Keep an eye on the views more than subscribers. We all want that silver play button Keith's got. It's kind of, you know, that that wrestling belt that you've got there, that trophy. But <laughs> don't get preoccupied with it. Uh, yeah. The views are more important than anything. I agree. Thank you, No Reels Loss. We appreciate that. She wants to know when you're going to do an awesome DIY boat video, Keith. What's what's that? Uh, like build a boat or DIYs for a boat? For a boat is what I take. I know. It. I'm for still partial for you building the uh, twin engine um, <laughs> wings for my boat with you and the weekend angler. I'm just going to keep that out there as a possibility. <laughs> um, I've got some boat DIYs. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I've got a lot of videos. I stay behind and people ask me to do something. I'll be like, okay, I'll do it. But it's going to take me a month or two because I've already, like I've got, I just finished one. I got the next one planned. And sometimes you're obligated to do a video. And sometimes a lot of, a lot of my videos, I kind of, it's hard to explain, but you can ramp up your channel. Like if you've got a really, really good idea and you go, well, you haven't posted a video in two weeks. Like me, I miss weeks. So I know well, I, well, I need to post a video, get it going before I post that one, or that's going to be a waste of video. There's actually a thing on YouTube that people don't know about. And wherever I heard it from was real credible, but they said that like, if you post a video this week and it gets 100 views, then you're guaranteed 700 impressions on your next video. Like you're guaranteed. YouTube's going to show it seven times more. So the better your last video did, the the more important your next one is. Does that make sense? And like and if you're not me. consistent like me, I want to just post something and get it out there before I drop a really good one. It's kind of a strategy that's hard to explain. Dieter probably can explain it better than me. Um, but the boat, the boat thing, I don't know. Tell her to leave it in the comment section somewhere and I'll uh, look into it because I like ideas. Heck yeah. 
Somebody suggested you build a boat completely out of PVC, Keith. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> There's your challenge. <laughs> I was talking about building a boat today, actually, to my wife. I've been wanting to do that for a while. I it's been a neat video. That's a that's a time consuming video. Yes, it is. But I think it'd be a good video. Yeah. 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 He's gonna save um, one in the future. He's he's got a video out there. He's already discussed it with me. <laughs> <laughs> I did a video. The week before he threw his phone in the water, I did a hack and it had a phone tether on that hack. I'm pretty sure. There's a great question right there. What about SEO scores? Dieter. Uh, uh, it's it's not as important, I think, as it used to be because YouTube the uh, the old algorithm has done a really good job of figuring out what people want to see and what they'll want to watch and they've done a real good job now with all the voice recognition and figuring out what the content is in the videos in the old days yeah you would put a bunch of keywords and i still put keyword phrases in mine but it, that's more for google search than anything but that's a whole nother topic but in the old days you had to have keywords and all that kind of stuff now they've gotten so good even with just the visual recognition that the algorithm is able to pull as far as what's in there i think that's the thing in some videos when you go man why did that video do good what what was so great about that one there's probably something in there you said that really tripped a trigger somewhere and put it into some category or there may be something that the actual algorithm was seen visually in the pictures i mean you know this stuff can pick up blood in a video uh you know they can tell a fish from a deer from a person from you know uh, a ball of yarn and that kind of stuff so so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't get too preoccupied on that focus on putting good content together telling a good story and the youtube will figure out who it needs to be handed out to are keywords as important as they used to be? No. Yeah, no. I didn't think so either. No. No, I put them in there, and like I said, you try to write a good description and all that will help with some stuff. Uh, if anything, if you use any of the things like TubeBuddy or something like that, where it'll show you the ranking for your keywords and your keyword phrases, it will give you a very good indication of what part of that content is valuable to people and the people on YouTube. That's about it. As far as it being found or discovered, not so much. YouTube's kind of, they're smart. I mean, they got some smart people figuring out how to make well, a list of work. Yeah, yeah. They're, they, they're, they've got to do a very good job of figuring out who to get stuff out to. Here's another good question. What microphone do you guys recommend? Mm. I think that depends kinds. a lot on what kind of camera you have. I got one up here that's hanging down. There's a Sennheiser MK60. This one's a Blue Yeti. Uh, honestly, Depends whatever. On what you're afford. doing, too. Like, yeah. Like a live stream, this roads. But but when I'm doing a video, I use a shotgun mic almost oh, my camera, usually. Mm -hmm. in front of the biggest thing with audio is proximity of the mic. If you know this mic sitting way over here, it's going to sound nowhere as good as when the proximity is a lot closer. That's what you're saying earlier about having that that doll collar camera, as I call it, around your neck. It puts that camera, which is what I pull my audio off of, right there where a lav mic mm -hmm. would be. So mic proximity is the biggest thing. The the GoPros have amazingly good audio, but it's useless to you when it's at the other end of the boat and you're up you know, at the other side fishing. If you got it like hanging right here, it's like wearing a live mic. Yeah. yeah. You're not facing the camera. You can forget about the audio being any good. Yep, yeah, exactly. And the, the SEO, what Dieter was talking about, I agree. I agree totally. I still use tags too because some, a lot of my stuff's possibly searchable. Like somebody might go on there and look for a fishing light DIY. So some of mine searchable. But when I look at my analytics, not much of it's coming from search. Like my last video I just posted, the hack video, um, 
but 66, 70% of it was from recommendations like YouTube recommending it. And only less than 10% come from notifications, believe it or not. And and I, I this is a this is something I've been wanting to say for a long time, but it, it drives me crazy. I hear YouTubers all the time they fuss and they like they're like 70% of my views don't even come from my subscribers. My subscribers ain't even watching me, and they get mad about that. If you if if all your views come from your subscribers, you're doing something really wrong. Because the way YouTube works now, 70% of your views came from new people. They're putting you out there. If you don't get put out there, you're never going to grow. That's right. You know what I mean? It shouldn't be all your subscribers watching, actually. People think of it like that. That's why subscriber number has so little value. Huh? That subscriber... There you go. There you go. Now your your subscribers are really important, but but I only point I'm making is like if a hundred percent of your views come from non-subscribers, that means a hundred percent new people seen you. So you got a better chance of growing. Yeah. Like you want that number to be kind of big. You know what I mean? Instead of it upsetting them, they should like that. Yeah. And I I can say this because after a year and a half of finally reaching that 1,000 subscriber threshold, I am finally starting to see YouTube recommending my videos. And I think part of that is because I've gotten better at making videos, but also that consistency, making sure you're putting a video out there consistently and being consistent and stuff. YouTube recognizes that they're not going to waste effort on promoting your video and recommending them to people if you're not being consistent. It's like if you show up for a job late every day, sooner or later your boss is gonna fire you. So I mean that kind of I, I feel like you know you gotta you start looking at those numbers where however you like Keith said, where is your your viewers coming from and, and you'll start getting those uh recommendations by YouTube. It feels good when you finally start getting them promoting you somewhat is what I'm trying to say. It does. It really does. And I have to tell you, in the case when I was a boss, you showed up for work late a couple of times, you was out of there. And when I was owned businesses and people worked for me, there is no way they could have had a phone in their hand all the time. I would have fired them instantly because they're there to work, not to play on that phone. And and I don't know how these guys that own businesses now tolerate that. I could not. There's no way. But consistency is a weird thing on YouTube. Like, I'm very inconsistent. Like, I, my last two videos, I think I skipped a week, made it. Then I skipped three weeks before I made the next one. And I don't do it on purpose because I work, and I'm working on the video, and I don't get gun. I ain't happy with it. So I just wait till next week and finish it the way I want to. But, like, and, and to go on with that, you look at Mark Rober, if I'm saying that right. Peter knows what I'm talking about. He only does one video a month, and he gets 50 million views every time he posts. But you're wow. you're like way up here, Keith. Well, well, but I'm saying it, his quality is so good. Like people just wait for him to drop a video. When you when you when you work so hard at it that people just like I've seen big channels with 500,000 subscribers just start dropping that their views and uh. It's because they they got they tried to do it take a shortcut and just put something out to be putting it out a few times and people was like well I don't know what's the more of that and but when you work really hard and you, they know you're gonna put a lot into it they wait for you for the video out you know what I mean it's like a <clears throat> like a season of The Walking Dead you're just waiting for the next season to start if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. They just put an episode on there just to be doing it. You know, well, we ain't got nothing this week. We're just gonna throw this on. That's why I'd rather miss a week. True. Because missing a week is better than just throwing something on there because they're gonna think the next one's gonna be like that and they're not gonna watch it. No, in fact, <laughs> that's the way I think about it. Thank you, Crappy Day. I appreciate that comment. And let me say this. If I don't get dropped out here, I was going to say this much earlier because it was going to cause some controversy. 
Uh oh. Uh, here comes out of pause to give the computer time to catch up. <laughs> Don't ever underestimate the impact that you have on people through the content that you put out here. Correct. That's both yeah. positive and negative. You can reach people in a positive way. You can reach them in a negative way. So anybody who's putting stuff out there, keep that in mind because uh, there, there are people watching all different Ages, races, beliefs, everything, and usually the common ground is the fishing. And mm -hmm. whether they're fishing now, in the past, whatever, uh, you can have a positive impact. When Lyle first had me on the show, y'all can go look up that episode. He asked me what was my goal with the channel, and that's what I told him then. Have a positive impact on the people's lives that you touch through the channel. So... We don't all have to be socially responsible with the content we put out. You can do whatever you want to. You can whine, moan, and complain about whatever. But for the people out there that want to do something good for the world, for the fishing community, keep that in mind. Have that positive impact. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Well, we, we have enough. Uh, my, my take on that is we deal with enough horse crap every day in the real life. Why do I want to get on YouTube and watch it? That's right. And I don't want to perpetuate it. I don't want to watch it. I, I mean, I want to, when I come to you, I want to be entertained or educated. And I don't want to deal with what I can deal with when I walk into the local, you know, fast food restaurant. That's why that's my take on it. Yeah. Here's a great question by D. She said, how do you all handle the negativity? I just tune it out. Myself. I never face any negativity. Everybody loves me. <laughs> dearly. And, uh, I'm just special in that way. Yeah, you are. You're special. <laughs> I, I just tune it out, honest to God. I, you just, yeah, if you let that bother you, you, the negativity will eat you up. Listen, you ain't nobody on social media if you don't have some haters. And That's right. you will. it don't matter what you put out, no matter how good it is. You could have video of plucking a, a baby, drowning baby out of the water, and you do CPR and save it, and somebody would complain and said you did CPR wrong. That's right. I mean, that's just yeah, 100% correct. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll tell you something about negativity I learned a few years ago. I kind of I kind of get excited when I get negative comments now. I didn't then because I didn't know no better, but um. I made a PVC video and it kind of blew up. For me, it blew up. It got 200,000 views in a week or two. And I was still kind of small. I think I had 8,000 subscribers. And, uh, well, I was happy about that. But then I started getting all these negative comments, talking, to, calling me inbred and say I talk funny. <laughs> and I was like, people are I never mean. noticed. Like, people are just mean. Well, I didn't respond to it. Of course, I deleted a few of them, but but it it upsets you. But yeah. now now like six months later, I think I did the bucket hack video or something. It started happening again. I went on there and I had these negative comments, and you know, from from watching it happen the first time, I was like. I was like, that's awesome. And I told my wife I had some negative comments. She was like, why are you happy about that? And I was like, that means this video is doing good. And sure enough, it blew up because <laughs> the negative comments don't come unless new people's watching. You. Exactly now, right. I learned yeah, exactly that right. doing those videos. Like when I get negative comments now, I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> I'm growing. I'm fixing to hit a growth spurt. People don't get that part. Because I see big YouTubers saying people are so mean and talking about, I get excited. I'm like, cool. New people see me because if you're saying, if your subscribers are the only one watching you, they're not going to be negative. It's when you're getting exposed to new eyes. There's going to be some smart elves. I mean, that's just the way people are. But you yeah. just don't let it bother you. It actually excites me now because. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because I see it and I know I know what's fixing to happen. And sure enough, that bucket video got six hundred thousand views. But I could see it happening before it happened because of the comment section. I'm looking forward to more haters. But I'm serious, that's right? right. Like, I, I, I'm telling you, it is a it, it, it's like your first, you know, that's your first little 
clue that you're reaching a wide range of people, a bigger, you're outside of the friends and family plan, as I call it. Yeah. You, know, you get all your friends and you, everybody loves you and all your cheerleaders are there. Once you start getting some haters in there, that's when you're starting to get outside of, you know, oh. that little group. And that's a good thing. You, I mean, honestly, uh, I just, I, I'm kind of like Keith. It's like, sweet. This one's getting out. That's somebody new. <laughs> yeah. That's somebody new watching the videos. Uh, you, but, you'll learn to look at it that way if you have yeah. a few videos do good. But it sounds you, great, but like a you never make video, everybody I happy. Do. That's the other thing to keep in mind. It don't matter what you do, you will never make everybody happy. You will never please everybody with your content. That's just the way it goes in life. And you stay focused on your bigger goal and keep on digging, man. Keep on That's digging. Right. Chris from Hooks and yeah, well, mind. Chris from Hooks and Sammy says, "Okay, no more nice comments for Keith." <laughs> <laughs> no, don't take it that way. <laughs> I've I've had uh, I've had bad comments and I just leave them on there. And then my subscribers will come on and just rip them to shreds, and I'm like, I just started deleting them because I don't I don't want that arguing. <laughs> I think well, I appreciate. You for you <laughs> when youtube gave me my comments back uh i went through and there's a little keyword section in there where not keywords but you can put words in there that it will not let the post go through so right. i spent about an hour one day going through there and there are some things you will see that do not show up in my comment section anymore and uh just uh judicious use of those words uh yeah, you can eliminate a lot of things. So You know, I had a guy send me a list of words for, like you're talking about, oh, I don't know, five or six years ago. And I've mm -hmm. added to that. <clears throat> and if you're having problems with certain people, you can put their name on that list and they don't it's show It's amazing. Up they disappear. Nobody ever they talks about them anymore. <laughs> That's right. They They're just gone. Go <laughs> I love that. They just go away. That's yeah. exactly right. You know how and that happens. <laughs> Works very good, but yeah, it. Um, uh, a guy sent me a list of what I thought was an endless amount of words, and I thought, "Wow, there's no way people would actually use these in comments." But I put them every one in there, and then I've added to them extensively. So, um, you know, if somebody decides they need that, I would gladly copy and send you that list because it is extremely complete. After about five or six years, yeah. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Catfish and Dreams, you get on a list. Yeah, we've been through that recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, George Carlin said there was only seven words. I'm a huge George Carlin fan for what that's worth to anybody, which is probably zero, but I still find mm -hmm. him very extremely entertaining. Jeremy Termas cast asked Dieter, where's the flatheads? Where are the flatheads? They're not on my boat. I have not uh, <laughs> caught hardly any this year because I'm doing so many guide trips now that we really don't focus on fishing for those fish. But I haven't spent much time fishing for them. So, yeah, I have no flathead glory to speak of. What percentage of the time would you say you're dragging baits, Dieter? Uh, honestly, on guide trips, I do a lot of it. Um, uh, there's probably 80% of the time I would guess, uh, most of our trips, we start out early, early pre-dawn and do some anchoring, targeting some bigger fish and then go cover water. Uh, now some days if the spot's right, we may sit there for five or six hours catching fish, but most of the time it's probably about, I'd say 80% of the time. I just, I like covering water. I like moving. Uh, we had a weird year with fishing as far as stuff not being where it normally has been for years and years uh, in different areas. So, and then once you find fish, what has happened is the next day they're gone. It's been the running joke. I have found fish on a guy trip and told people, text me tomorrow. I'm coming back here first. I'll tell you how it is. And about eight out of 10 times, I'll go back to this place and fish will be gone. I mean, it's, it's nothing's like staying in the same area. So, Covering water seems to be the remedy for that. I got to answer a question. Sorry, there's a question in the chat for me. Yeah, JTC, it's not 
well, it is most weeks where I'm the best looking guy on the screen. It makes me nervous. <laughs> sorry, we'll, we'll move on. I By the way, I'm sorry I didn't grow any facial hair for this. I'm the only one. That's all right. Is, uh, shaving, so. <laughs> you the best looking hat on the screen. <laughs> it matches my neon light. By the way, everybody ask about this neon light. Custom made locally by Neon Shop in Charlotte. Don't ask the price because you can get Josh Roth to make you a catfish replica for about the same price of a real catfish. So I was just, talking to yeah. Chad, though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was my hat. Burn. <laughs> He hasn't no, given me a I hat. Can you believe that? I don't know why Keith doesn't have reading glasses on. Everybody else does. Uh, I, just no, I ain't on. reading nothing. That's why I keep doing this. That explains it. Oh, um, man. Keith, um, Keith the, just so you know that the weekend angler is done, you know. <laughs> He's, he's in on this. He's just wanting the 300 horsepower engines that he's asking you to buy for me. I don't know. I think he misspelled when he said, have I bought them? Um, <laughs> here's a question that I have for you guys as, you know, I've reached 1,000 once and I didn't get the chance to retire when I hit the, hit it the first time. So I'm getting there. I'm almost to the second time. And I think this time they're going to let me monetize. We'll see. Um, so when I hit 1K, you know, I'm going to strike it rich and be able to retire oh, yeah. Um, yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah. So 1200 no, really, but yeah, thousand. Yeah, oh, okay. 1200. Mm -hmm. No, seriously though, you know, what is your thoughts about that? Right. You know, most, almost everybody has that, you know, we'll call it a nine to five job, except for if you're as, um, as old as Lyle, where you're retired. Um, I have an emoji for you. <laughs> love you, buddy. <laughs> um, but you know, do you see that as a, a real goal, right? As far as a personal goal for you guys, or what do you think about making that choice, right? Do you think you would ever be able to make that choice being a YouTuber full-time? Go first, I Mr. Silver, it, play button. I think, uh, I think <laughs> anything's possible, but... I'll tell you this, when I got to a thousand subscribers, the guys at work gave me a hard time. <laughs> they said, Oh, you're a professional YouTuber now. So they, <laughs> because I told them how much I was making and they were laughing about it. Cause I made a dollar a day. So I was making like thirty dollars a month. So it would took me half the year to even get a check from YouTube. Yeah, that sounds yeah. right. That's where I'm at now. But but I mean as I've seen things grow, it's kind of it. It can be really impressive. I don't know. It, it's you know what the like. Nobody asked this specific question, but I'm gonna say it. The most important thing you can do on YouTube, like I told you, it's about the people that's watching, not about you. Is find the right subjects. The subject beats everything because like. I can have the best thumbnail, make the best video, you know, just get everything right about butterflies. But if nobody wants, cares about butterflies, nobody's going to watch it. So subjects like the number one thing, I always try to remember that. Like, um, I, I'll give you an example. When I, I'm working on a planner board video now. Planner board is not the best subject on YouTube because – I think most fishermen, the big, at least the beginner fishermen, they don't care nothing about planter boards. They don't even know what they are, might be. Like you, there's other subjects that's better. So I already know it's not the best subject. It's not going to be the best video. But still, second, the thumbnail. The thumbnail's the most important thing after the subject. So subject, thumbnail, because if you get the right thumbnail, People will click on your video and YouTube, will, but but you gotta get the watch time. Like if they click on you, they click on your thumbnail, they watch it and leave immediately. It's gonna die too. But but you have to get the click. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. Like, so you need to be. You have to have the right subject, right thumbnail, then make good videos. That's why that sounds so simple, but it ain't simple. 
but I think it, I think once you get good at knowing what your subject is, after you've made a couple hundred videos or or, or a thousand like Dieter, and you get seven hundred twenty, you start learning. I think I think <clears> seven hundred twenty. He's like I think it's possible once you learn. It takes time to learn how to make good videos, learn how to make good thumbnails. But you're also learning about subjects. Like Dieter knows what works. He knows what to go back and touch on because he's did it long enough. I know what works on my channel. But you also need to experiment because I talked about that PVC video that blew up and I got all those hateful comments. Me and Dieter talked about that the night before I posted it. And he told me to make more videos, like split it up more. And I was like, I'm just going to put them all on one video. But I had no idea that would blow up. I'd never made a PVC video. So, so test the water. Don't just get stuck on one thing all the time. You know what I mean? Like, because this done good, I'm going to do it again. I'll freeze up. Oh, dang it. Damn but it. Test dude. the water. Learn what subjects work. I do have a serious note. Uh, I just got some information that Jay Fox Hunter is back in the hospital, and we need to please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. That's a gentleman that watches almost all of the shows that's on um, YouTube that I'm familiar with in the fishing industry. So please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Yep. Jay Fox at CatCon. He's a nice guy. Yeah, he is a very nice guy. Along with Ricky from Whisker Dreams, lost his sister yesterday, uh, yesterday mm. the day before. So that's that's a crying shame too. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, you can make a living in fishing related to YouTube. Uh, obviously, some people have done it. Luke from Catfish and Carp, he's the biggest example. Of course, he's the biggest name there is. Period in the whole niche, but. There's other people doing it. Justin's doing it now. He gave up a uh, good career to give it a shot. Uh, I think having relying totally on YouTube income, you got to be pretty big. Uh, you need to get, yeah. uh, you know, in Keith, you know, like Keith, you need to be like him and have a silver play button and everything. <laughs> no, but uh, again, it's not subscribers, it's the views, and it depends where you're getting views. The views. There's That's a lot. Right. I've been. I've been lucky that while YouTube is great and the income off it's great, the God stuff blew up. I wasn't expecting that. You listen to all the YouTube gurus, they'll tell you to sell training stuff or this or that. That just kind of fell in my lap. And I've had a lot of stuff production related from people that I built contacts with on YouTube that know me through the channel that has been a spin off there in doing production work that is totally not related to anything I've ever done before. So Yes, you can do it. Uh, it's there's all kinds of little ways to make money off of it. You know, uh, Muddy River Catfish and Chris Flores, he sells fishing rods. You know, he's got that and uses you know YouTube as a portal to get that out to people. Uh, Steve Douglas, a great example. He's you know, he basically promoted his brand Monster Rod Holders, you know, through the channel. So when you have some of those other little side things, I say side things that are. There are all things that are attached to it and through the promotion and the reach that you get through. Yeah, you can do it. It's going to take some time, uh, but it definitely, definitely can be done. But if you're like Chad and are independently wealthy and have that Chad feels money, it's a lot easier. Well, you know, them trust fund babies. <laughs> man, it's, it's tough living like <laughs> that. Travel America. <laughs> Keeping up with the Joneses over here. I mean, he's <laughs> just, he, well, just jealous because I've got a you know, big screen TV on a, you know, little John boat looking thing that makes it look you bigger. You have really a big is. TV on yours that you use for a depth finder. You call it Garmin <laughs> or something. <laughs> hey, I got a, hey, I got a great sponsor. You do. I call, I call her Sugar Mama. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> um... <laughs> Any Let other say that, <clears throat> when you said sponsor, it made me think of something else. And this was something that I was going to get into earlier, but we never had a segue. Don't the the impact that YouTube has had on the catfish world, catfishing, 
is bigger, I think, than anybody realizes. We got into this argument when the uh, ACA had their Hall of Fame and I made my video <laughs> about the picks and that created a big uproar because I really believe somebody like a Luke Nichols has had a bigger impact on bringing people to the sport, educating them. And I think it's really underestimated. And I think it will be down the road sometime when we look back and go, there's a lot of people out there that the impact they've had, Steve Douglas with what he's taught people in, you know, the education about the sport and how to fish and bringing different people into the sport. You know, Chris Flores fishing out there in the middle of the desert, catching them flatheads out of them ditches he fishes in, brought a lot of people to the sport. So, yeah, I think the impact uh, that YouTube has had is pretty significant. And, you know, all those other people out there watching just starting, some kid that's, 13, 14 years old can be that next generation that, you know, keeps that going. We've got, you know, the power to change a lot of stuff. We've got the power yeah. to change legislation and have an impact on it. So yeah. there's a, there's a, there's a lot of, lot of stuff. We just need the right people chart, making the charge and doing the leading to get there. And right now we do not have that. And look, lady, yeah, we're definitely keeping you in our thoughts and prayers as well. Sorry to hear about your your dad. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I know this ain't editing, um, or you know that kind of stuff when it comes to this question. But I'm going to consolidate two questions, and I want each of you all's response. It's a two part question. One: Will it be on a lake or river? And will the where will the world record be caught? And will it be on chicken? Go. Well, no, won't be on chicken. Hold on. Now, Who's go first? ahead. Give us your answers. <clears throat> go ahead, Kate. Uh, I think <laughs> the new world Mr. record, the blue, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Come by blue, right? <laughs> yeah. I think, uh, I think the lake. I think it'll be caught on lake, and it won't be caught on chicken. <laughs> what was the other question? I think the answer, and I don't know. Somebody clucked, and I just lost it all. So. <laughs> just, just for the record, just for the record, I made a video on that, so you can look. You it did. No, uh, the. <laughs> Just, let's be clear. The current world record is listed by the IGFA as being caught on chicken. The whole chicken sign, or just a press part? They had to sign an affidavit to to get that record put into the IGFA. So, Hey, Dieter. Like all the jokes, jokes Dieter, 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 Dieter. How many times have you had salmonella? <laughs> do you, do you lick your fingers when you do that? But I don't lick my I don't lick my fingers after putting chicken or gizzard shad on the hood. So you know, <laughs> you All right, I brought my humor to the show. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I the only th there's some great lakes that have wonderful fish in them, but the Mississippi River one year in the in the very distant future or past. Hadn't been that long ago. There was 600-pound fish caught below the Alton Dam to the St. Louis area in one year. Six, over 100 pounds. There's nowhere else in the world that I'm aware of that has done that. And I'm talking about blue catfish on the Mississippi River. Now, the reason I say that it should come from the Mississippi River is because the Missouri Department of Conservation done a study from the Iowa line to the confluence where the Missouri drops in to the Mississippi. And from the west side of the state where the Missouri comes in to the confluence of the Missouri and Mississippi. In, that, in those two stretches of water, their conclusion was there were several new world records, state and world records, in those two. But they won't tell you where they're at. They won't tell you how big they was. They caught them up. They shocked them up. They weighed them. They put them back. That's why I say the reason why you don't see them. It's because even though we got the best equipment now that the fishing community has ever had, 130-pound fish or bigger require special equipment and a special guy to get them in without losing it. And then a net that's big enough to hold it. There's so many variables. 
And the people in Memphis claim that they catch world record sized fish all the time. The commercial fishermen do. And they don't want you to know about them. They don't want you down there catching them fish because they want them returned to the water because them are their breeding fish and they want to be able to sell the smaller fish. Now, those are the people that really care about the fishing are the ones that do that. Carlite Just, on chicken. I think, oh, God, I knew you was going to say that. Well, <laughs> I, in, I in, all honesty, in all honesty, though, to your point, when I made that video about a world record fish, the problem with the Mississippi is the <clears throat> fishability of it. It is. You tough. don't have as many people that can fish it as you do on a lake or reservoir. Not to mention the fact that I think current plays a part in the growth of a fish. In oh, yeah, absolutely. Growth. But it is a lot harder for the common man to go fish the Mississippi River and, one, be able to fish it effectively, and, two, be able to actually get a fish in. Because you know as well as I do, a hundred and well, a 50 pound fish in that kind of current is. It's a load. He's yeah, locked up. It, in. It, you got a 50 pitchy shot, you'll get it. Back. Yeah. And, and, it better, and you can be using the best equipment on the market. It's just hard to get a 60, 80, 100 pound fish in when you're talking about three, six, nine, 12 mile an hour current. And the further south you go, the heavier the current gets because St. Louis is yeah. the last dam on that <clears> river. There ain't no more, and it's just free flowing from that point on. Yeah, and it gains speed every foot. Well, I'll tell you something else. Uh, you was talking about like six hundred pound fish coming out of Mississippi. Well, something else you got to think about, like Curl Lake, is we we have dams on our rivers, like you know what I mean. So they're mm -hmm. all the same river chain. Yeah. But you look at Curl Lake, Gaston, the new North Carolina world record, well, North Carolina state record came from right below gas and it's all the same river chain there's a lot of big fish comes out of that chain too and they're actually just through different lakes but it's like something's in the water the <laughs> fish here travel through them dams on our rivers now i don't know if they do on your lakes or not but they don't on like the lakes between truman and lake ozark and uh all them they can't go through those dams but on the on the rivers where they run barges through them fish go through them dams they'll go back and forth through them no telling how many times hmm. i don't think they can on ours we'll start yeah. fishing at the gates so they're locked you you. the greatest story i got is is there was fish tagged um between chillicothe missouri years ago and um uh, kansas city three years later it was caught below memphis three years later and the tag was still in the fish. Now my question never was that it made it down there, but my question was how many times did it make that trip? Because blues travel a lot. Yeah. Um, they, they notorious for going different areas and long distances, but how many times did it make it? Did, was that the only time or did it take it three years to get there? Um, I know we've, we've, we've uh, fished tournaments and we found fish, below a dam one night and we, next morning we get up there to fish them and they're gone and we go to the next dam which is like nine or eleven miles below that and above that dam there's a pile of fish that you you know it's the same fish but they're going with the current downstream they can make that overnight with no issues whatsoever mm -hmm. and yeah. you set up on them you start catching them and a lot of times they're not the fish you're looking for but you get your limit and then you start your upgrading so there's variables to a lot of things like that. Do we have any other questions for anybody for these guys? They've Man, you guys have, have killed it tonight. You've given us some of the greatest information we've ever had. <clears throat> By the way, my apologies to Fishing and Chick. I saw your comment. Sorry I couldn't get you booked on a trip. And <clears throat> Serena, hello to you. Thank you for jumping across the table and leaving Keith at CatCon to give me a hug. That was nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what a deal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, man. I want to thank you three for coming on here and being a part of our show tonight. It has been outstanding. Um, Honored to be here. Well, you know, 
I think you guys know how much I think of all of you, and, and I appreciate the fact that you take time out from your days and come on here with Chad and I and, and share so much information that a lot of this stuff that you guys talked about tonight, if people didn't have someone like you tell them, they'd never know, yeah. including me on a lot of it, because I, you know, I'm not big on editing, but sometimes you just got to do it. Um, I don't edit our videos. I put them up that, you know, we post them just like they are. So the people that watch them later can get exactly what we talked about tonight. And that's what will happen with this one. But um, the stuff that you guys shared tonight is just, just awesome. And I can't thank you guys enough. And if you, the three of you, any of you have, or all of you have closing statements that you'd like to make, please do so. I was, I was going to say something else actually. Um, Go ahead. If I talked about what was most important on YouTube, but I think the most important thing about YouTube is you got to love to do it. Like you talk about not liking editing, but you love doing live streams. And it's obvious because you've been doing it for what, eight years. Yeah. And if you don't love doing it, you won't do good at it. So that's right. So don't do YouTube mm. to make money. Like that, that can, that'll come. I promise that'll come if you love to do it. Because most of the guys that love to fish that you see out there two or three times a week, they're really good fishermen because they're out there two or three times a week because they love doing it. And you got to love YouTube that way too. Yeah. And like right. I'm, I make stuff and I tell people all the time, my buddy that's in a lot of my videos, David Buff, I'll get him to, like weld some aluminum for me or do things. And he is like the best fabricator I know. I'm not saying he's the best one in the world, but he can he can build anything. But you know what? And I'm not talking about him. He know I've told him like he don't know how to film. He don't know how to edit. He don't know how to tell a story. You know why he's editing. He don't know all this. Like he don't know how to do YouTube. To do YouTube, you got to be more than just a good fisherman. You got to be a good YouTuber, and you put those two things together, and you make some. I mean, it it matters. You got to know as much about YouTube as you do about fishing. If you love them the same, you'll do great. And that's really the secret behind YouTube. I I would agree with that. Absolutely. I I assume that Pebbles is your wife. Yeah. <laughs> and um. She has to know that if she doesn't, she needs to understand how important that what you do for entertainment to our community has meant to a lot of us. Because I will stop watching a video if I get a notification that Fishing and Stuff has posted something. And I don't just go in there and watch part of it. I watch it all every time, just like I watch Dieters. Every time I watch the whole video. there, I, I don't want to miss any of it. Because if I miss something on Dieters, it, I got something I can't make fun of him about, you know. And I'm not going <laughs> to let that slide. But with Keith, it's different because he, he's so entertaining and it's been so much <clears throat> fun. And Pebbles, we, we appreciate you sharing him with us, like Dee said, because uh, we, we love Keith a whole bunch. That goes back to what I was saying. Like, you can ask Pebbles. <clears throat> if I love doing YouTube. I like like I love YouTube. D Me and Dieter talk because we both understand YouTube, and everybody don't think like we do. You know what I mean? So we have good conversations, and and I love YouTube so much. She used to be like, "Quit talking about YouTube," because I'm always looking up things and learning stuff. You know what I mean? Because just like when you love fishing, that's all you talk about. You can tell what somebody loves by the way they talk. And if you love it like that, you're going to do good at it. It's going to take time. Everything takes time, but you're going to do good at it if you love it. And that's all I can say. That's probably the most important thing. That's great great content there. It really is. And it does get easier over time. Of course, I'm still real young at the YouTube game, but you know, when I first started, I, I struggled with editing. I struggled with talking to the camera. That's hard to to watch yourself. Well, it's I can't hard stand to hear my own voice. <laughs> so you're like, oh, I sound so horrible. I'm such a hillbilly. But I've kind of embraced that. I've learned to embrace that and, and you know, work it into my videos kind of like, I, I just want to be me, right? 
That's right. And like he said, you got to enjoy having fun and have fun on camera. And uh, people, I think people will want to watch you if you're having fun and you're enjoying it. I, I agree. And I, I promise you, if you'll be yourself, people will take you for face value of what you are. Yep. Dieter, do you agree with that? He froze up with me. I no, agree. I think Steve Douglas told me that when I started. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen yeah. everybody going in and out. Yeah, you can't fake it. You can't fake it. You got to be real. And the other thing, if somebody's trying to become the next fishing and stuff to get to that level, you got to commit some time to it. You you can't come into this and expect to do it in a couple of years. You it's a long game. And I'll say that again. It's a long game. Sometimes people get lucky and it happens quick, but for most people, it's a long game. Five years. If you want to be Keith, commit five years to it and then come back to me at the end of five years and say it's not working. Yeah, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Agree. And, and and you both are extremely successful in, in the YouTube industry. Uh, and I knew that you was both going to be years ago. And I look for Bob to be there in the near, in the near future. I think that he's uh, the content that he put out in his thumbnail, everything that he does, he's real on his shows. He does, he does very well. That's why he's in being a part of this show tonight. Um, another one that I think is doing real good is Mark with catfish and crappie. I think he'll get there. Um, I don't have the desire at my age to put that much time in it. So I'll sit back and watch Dieter and Keith and Bob and Mark and, and Chad and all these guys that are doing things. There's a lot of great startup channels going right now, but if you don't have the commitment that Keith and Dieter has had, you might not make it to their level, but you'll do fine. You know, you'll do as hard, you'll get out of it as much as you put in it. And oh, the commitment. Thing. Commitment that you put into Catfish Weekly, I think we can all learn from that. That's a, a heck of an obligation of commitment. And I'm probably going in and out because everybody on my screen's going in and out. But yeah, what you've done is a bigger commitment than any of us have made. Well, it's just you have to love to do it. And um, I'm a pretty shy fella for the most part, but uh, I do love doing this show. It has been it's been a godsend for for entertainment on Monday night from my perspective and. And all the people that's helped us along the way has made it made it what it is, and that includes you, Dieter, and and uh, Keith, because you guys have helped me a great deal with different things. Whoop, lost him that time. That'll teach me to say something nice about him. His chicken He's back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that that's that's what it is, and and you get help for for guys that like Dieter and Keith, and and uh, Mark's helped me a great deal, and uh, Paul Ragsdale a long ways, and and that's. That's the stuff that, that makes it better. If you get those guys and, and to help you a little bit, if everybody that watches this show will take a little something away from it and apply it to what they do, they'll 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 benefit from it. Yeah. Let me let me fan fan geek out here a minute with these two guys uh, over here. Whatever, which, whichever direction you are. Yeah, you were definitely looking at the right right here. <laughs> at, at, at Catcon, right? I walked up to both Dieter and Keith. And they're just the most friendly people and act like they've known you forever and speak to you. That's who you want to be. You want to be right. approachable. And uh, I really appreciate the fact that those guys are so willing to talk to just anybody and not, you know. Of course, uh, most people I've met in the catfish community have been that way. They've been open and friendly. And, yep. uh, don't ever get so big that you, you, you don't want to talk to people. Uh, I I agree. Dieter's got a pretty big ego, but me, I I still feel like I got two thousand subscribers. Yeah. Like I don't feel like I'm nobody. <laughs> like people, <laughs> believe it or not. Come on, like, come on, Keith. Okay, talk to them the way you <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> Be real, Keith. Like, no, I'm being real. Like you can ask my wife because, like. I started not to go to CatCon because it's so awkward. And and I, and I get it because, like, first time I seen Luke Nichols out here, I was starstruck, you know, like five years ago. Yeah. And and now people want to talk to you, and it's like you don't know them, and it's awkward. And, and like, I don't think I'm a big nothing. I just do videos. And those, those numbers – are just numbers because YouTubers are introverts. Me and Dieter talked about that. You sit in your living room 
editing videos all the time and you're just an introvert and then you go out in public and it's so awkward because you don't really those those numbers turn into people that's yeah. why i said at the beginning so mm -hmm. it's not an algorithm it's people yeah true like the algorithm is serving people and if people like you it's just going to keep serving them you know what i mean so it's real people you have to remember that <laughs> And, I mean, and new, like new best friends and everything come out of it. Yeah. Uh, Your wife's awesome. She is. <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't win with you guys. Yeah. Let me give her a hat, man. That's my hat. She said, that's my hat. <laughs> well, listen, we're running on about two hours. Um, uh, good Chad, you got any clothes and stuff? Um. No, fellas, really amazing, amazing show tonight. You know, thank you all for the great insights and all the different knowledge and giving everybody more to think about. You know, so uh, and and like I say, they all you got I to love do it when that happens is <laughs> is take what what these guys have shared with you tonight and apply it um, to your way of doing YouTube videos. You'll be successful. Uh, do, you get out of it what you put in it. That's the best thing I can say for. Keith, Bob, thank you so much. And Dieter, thank you guys for, for I'm yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you guys for, for joining us tonight. We appreciate it so very much. <clears throat> um, remember that Mark's not going to have a show tonight, but he is in chat, so you can holler at him there. Um, and we'll, Mark. we'll be back next Monday night, and Mark will be behind us Monday night coming up. And Thursday, um, Fields the Stream, Woods the Water. What? Fishing with the Chad. So Thursday night, everybody, Fields to Water, 8 p.m. Eastern at 8 p.m. God time. Come on over, check it out. Oh, we'll yeah. Great guest of the year this coming Thursday. We will be followed by Panfish Nation. Um, Mark from Catfish and Crappie joins that guy that I just kicked out Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come over, check those folks out. They are approaching that fabulous 1K mark as well. Make sure you come in and uh, support them as well. Kick the guy out of his own show. Kick me out of my own <laughs> show. What a deal. I did right. see that um, uh, before. I, it's gone now. <laughs> Muskrat Adventures, Catfishing for Kids. Um, check That's that great. out. And, uh, yeah, Mark says quit picking on me, Chad. Thanks, everybody, for watching the show tonight. We'll try to get these guys back on. Maybe we can wait a year and do it again if they're interested. We had a great time tonight. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week.